Today on Near Mint Condition, we're talking about ducks. Oh, you mean like Howard the Duck? Gizmo Duck, Blathering Blatherskite. Let's get dangerous, Dark Wing Duck. <laughs> ah, Donald, you're right. We're here to talk about the greatest comic books of all time, Uncle Scrooge Comics. We're talking about Darkwing Duck because I see a bunch of ducks. You know, I have noticed that there's been a resurgence of DuckTales, Disney Afternoon video games, the new cartoon you that's came coming out. out. With Darkwing Duck, uh, the comic book recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so. so let's talk about DuckTales. Woo! Dan, would you like to be the bearer of bad news or do you want me to do it? So, DuckTales. We all, we all love DuckTales. It's not what we're going to talk about tonight. Blathering Blatherskite. <laughs> uh, no, what, we, what we're going to talk about is. Uncle Scrooge, Life and Times, uh, going back to what, the 30s? Uh, going back to the 40s when he first appeared. I guess the 30s, since this is kind of where it all began with the character known as Donald Duck, right? Known from <laughs> like Disney cartoons and shorts and stuff like that, Silly Symphonies and all that. Sure. And then there was a comic book, probably in the 1930s, like 36, 37, Donald Duck had his own comic book. There's a gentleman named Carl Barks. Uh, who came in and wrote the comic books that he started creating a whole a world. A mythology. Building, a, yeah, yeah, like Duckburg and um, mm -hmm. all these other characters that we're very familiar with. And it was 1947 when Uncle Scrooge first showed up in a story called A Christmas, Christmas on Bear Mountain. He was just kind of like one-time throw-off character. And then Carl Barks was like, well... Maybe I could use his money to propel the stories further. I can, you know, the nephews can go on trips and things like that. And then he noticed that there was a kind of a following for his character, and he kind of started liking his this character, of this multi-gajillionaire, whatever ridiculous words they come up with now. <laughs> Just a little bit of history here, too. Like, these comics were kind of contracted out. Like, Disney just put a stable, t like, put their stamp on it, and that was it. So most of these creators had kind of the right to do what they wanted with these characters. They got paid pennies on the dollar, yeah. really. Ooh. Disney got most of the money. A lot of these guys died broke. And of course, all of this is work made for hire, so any of these characters belong to Disney, not to the people who created them. Even though you created... Flint Blum Blum Heart Glum Gold. Yes. Even though you created him, it belongs to Disney. Yeah. So all these characters, you know, 40s up until 1962 when he retired. And ever since then, there has always been duck comic books right and it's almost sad because here in america they never got the love that they got everywhere else like it's huge in europe it's huge in south america it outsells just about every other comic book so there are two stories in particular i want to talk about in carl the carl burks era that kind of are very stapled one of them is from uncle scrooge number seven it's uh the seven cities of cibola and you know the scene it's got the beagle boys taking a statue from a temple and then the statue triggers a booby trap. I'm setting booby traps. Booby traps. That's what I said. Sam. I'm setting booby traps. <laughs> and a giant boulder rolls down and really follows sure. these beagle like boys Indiana while Jones. a bunch of like natives are chasing Uncle Scrooge and gang with spears. And yes, you're right. It is the plot to Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, and Crash Bandicoot. There was a collection <laughs> of Uncle Scrooge: His Life and Times by Carl Barks that Spielberg did the introduction for it, and he credited that those particular that particular story as kind of the inspiration for Raiders of the Lost Ark. And the other stable story is pretty cool. It was uh, it was a story set in, I think, 1949. It's called The Sunken Yacht. It's where the nephews are trying to raise one of Uncle Scrooge's ships like and do it really cheap because it's made of... Because it's Uncle Scrooge. He's a mm. penny pincher. <laughs> and do it uh, really cheap, right? So they what they do is they put a bunch of ping pong balls and they kind of raise it up like that that totally makes sense well they took that science in 1969 like in kuwait like a, a, a like this giant ship sank and okay of course they made it big right but they <laughs> took that basic logic science and they did it 
huh. and they raised the ship like that so much as they were trying to get a patent on whatever that was they did it and the, uh, I think it was the Dutch that stepped in and were like no no that belongs to Carl Barks <laughs> <laughs> nice nice my story with these books uh, started in high school when I worked at a comic book shop there was a guy that had a similar pull list like I did we collected X-Men and uh, Batman and things like that and he always tried to get me to read Uncle Scrooge comics like and I told him I'm like ah, you know I'm like ah, I'm not, that's kitty stuff I'm not gonna read that I read X-Men I read Batman <laughs> I'm cool real yeah. heroes <laughs> grown up books <laughs> he was like not that cartoon son you he, I mean, he looked at me he's like son you've never read Uncle Scrooge and I was like no nah, I'm not going to for a couple of years he tried and then finally I think it was 1996 he, he brought me a stack of books and it was this book stack of the life and times of uncle scrooge or the life and times of scrooge mcduck it's a 12 part series that kind of went through the uncle scrooge books mm -hmm. and it was done by a gentleman named don rosa who happens to live in the state of kentucky the don rosa books when when he came in did he just kind of continue where carl barks left off or did he go through and kind of start over or retell some of the same stories for a new audience how did that how did that work from a continuity standpoint okay so don rosa is the epitome of what a fanboy creator is <laughs> ah, like he the james roberts of of ducks <laughs> yes Ex <laughs> no you're absolutely right <laughs> as far as like transformers yeah he took everything that carl bark said and it was like the holy bible to him mm -hmm. and i mean everything from one panel of him, of Uncle Scrooge is going, man, I remember the time I stopped those Indians from so-and-so. Took all that information and just wrote it down or embedded it into his head. So by the time he was doing this stuff, he was able to make, uh, well, we'll talk about this here in a second. But yeah, Carl Barks, if it wasn't Carl Barks, it was not part of Uncle Scrooge continuity. Mm. All those European comic books that had created like their own characters, not to Don Rosa. Don Rosa's <laughs> like, those guys don't exist. If Carl Barks had not put it down, you know, in the years that he wrote Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck, no thanks. So he took all that information and yeah, he was, it was editorial mandate to do the life and times of Scrooge McDuck. Like they wanted a history of everything that made Scrooge who he was. Don Rosa was the, the next big duck artist. And that was in 1986 with Son of the Sun. Okay. It's uh, like he, he went from 86 to like 2006 and he did like 90 stories. Uh, this is but current he, with the DuckTales cartoon? It is, and I'll, we'll get to that here in a second. Okay. Um, so his big magnum opus was this story called The Life and Times of Uncle Scrooge, where he took all of Carl Barks' not, like, history and all these books, like I said, even off panels that are like, I did so-and-so in this year and stuff like that, and made a chronological history of the story of Scrooge McDuck. That's 12 chapters, and they go through, you know, 1877 when he was 10 years old, and how he got his first dime. You all know, familiar with the uh, number one, mm -hmm. yeah, right? He keeps it yeah. enshrined, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not as magical in the books as it is in DuckTales, where magic of the spell. Well, I guess later on does kind of become magical. <laughs> magic but anyway, spell. it's not to him. It's kind of like, see, there's nothing lucky about it to him. It's his reminder of his first start. And the beauty of the character is like, his whole motto is like, there's always another rainbow. Because for the first 30 years of his life he would make money and then some horrible thing would happen and he would lose it and he's like oh, oh well i'll just have to keep trying harder you know and it kind of made him sterner it kind of made him who he is and i think that's why i love the book because uh he's such a complicated character or a complex character uh basically because of all these things all these betrayals that have happened and there's even a story in here where he kind of he does a little retconning in the sense of um there was a story that Uncle Scrooge, like, just hired a bunch of cutthroats and destroyed an African <laughs> village, right? Whoa. This happened in the 40s, right? And he was like, man, how am I going to write that? Because he wanted to write every aspect of his life. Uh -huh. So the way he did it was, it, it is the one time that Uncle Scrooge was so horrible and, and, and that it was the only time that it happened, right? Like, where he got, hired a bunch of cutthroats and then there, there's a zombie that chases him because of this. And it chased him for like 30 years of his life. And he's like, I will never do that again. And it kind of destroyed the relationship between him and his family. They became distant. And it goes all the way up to like 1947, I think. 
Now, nowhere in the history of anywhere has there ever been a death of Uncle Scrooge, because uh, Don Rosa uses real years. Like, it starts in 1877, and the story kind of ends in 1947. That's the way Uncle Scrooge will always be. Like, that's... His adventures will always take around that time, up until his death. And he considers his death in 1962, which is when Carl Barks retired from drawing those comic books. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody's ever done that story. You're not sure. I'm sure nobody ever will. But a lot of the elements for DuckTales were borrowed from these stories, these adventures that they went on. And Don Rosa even wrote one of the stories in DuckTales. Uh -huh. okay. So that's probably what you guys are more familiar with. You watched the first episode of the new DuckTales, right? Yes. How does how does that compare to the Don Rosa Scrooge McDuck story? It, it's actually kind of similar. They're looking at his old antique collection and they're like, "Oh, this guy bought these things at an auction. You know, there's no way he was an adventurer they say he was." And then like, you know, his back strengthens and He's like, oh, I feel young. I can't do a Scottish accent. <laughs> but even in the books, like they kind of uh, go back and say, oh, that's because he drank some of the water from the Fountain of Youth. Even though he doesn't even get to be immortal, he can still live a long life. Used to be a big deal. So then the other important question that I want to ask is, uh, when did uh, Don Rosa invent Gizmo Duck? <laughs> if Don Rosa created a machine that he could, he would slap you right now. Because Don Rosa really doesn't create characters. I mean, he, he does a little bit, and he kind of redraws characters mainly because of the time that we live in. Like Launchpad <laughs> McQuack. No, you're an idiot. <laughs> Darkwing Duck? Like, <laughs> no! You guys are paying attention. This is not DuckTales. <laughs> no, and all, honestly, like his involvement in DuckTales is, is Uncle Scrooge and the nephews and, yeah. and Donald. Anybody and, and, that Carl Barks created. Because, no, these characters that are wow, wonderful and endearing to us, even though you think... DuckTales really jumped the shark with uh, Gizmo Duck and Bubba Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Which it did. Really interesting, though, how DuckTales, that we're all familiar with, borrowed so heavily from this while not in any way directing us to the existence of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the same sense that most comic book movies don't direct you to a comic book, right? Well, most no. comic book movies don't say, hey, if you like this movie... Go and check out Amazing Spider-Man number one thirty-five. Through you know what I'm saying? Like, no, they don't I, really. I do. But there was, but I mean, Disney doesn't maybe need any money from this. Yeah, but maybe Disney it's makes just, their own money from. I suppose, but maybe it's just that there's popular consciousness that Batman is a comic yeah. character. Right. Spider-Man is a comic character. If you want to read, if you want to learn more well, about Spider-Man, you can go read comics. And I will say, well, I never unlike, got unlike, the feeling that watching Ducktales. Right. But that Batman if I wanted started to know as a comic about, book, though. Whereas, like Donald. Sure. was a Disney cartoon. And right. therefore, most people are like, oh, this is based on the cartoon. No thanks. Yeah. Right? We even do that I with manga. That. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If a manga is based on an anime, you're like, no, I've already seen the anime. Which rarely happens, but it happens. Like with Evangelion and things yeah. like that. And speaking of anime, I really think, and a lot of people do uh, too, that if it wasn't for Karl Barks, we wouldn't have Osama Tezuka. Like, Os Tezuka was just loved his artwork. Mm. Loved uh, Karl Barks' Donald Duck. So much so that he was like, mail him uh, just Christmas cards and things like that of Astro Boy hugging Uncle Scrooge and and just these really? little wonderful things that they had between them. We didn't have an Uncle Scrooge comic for the last four years. It wasn't until IDW started publishing them again. And those are just translated European comics that have never made it here. They're not. So, there's nothing new. Okay, so IDW, there are. They don't have somebody creating new stories. No, they did when they were with Boom Comics. They had new Duckwing Duck and DuckTales. Mm -hmm. and, but then Marvel, uh, Disney. And uh, Disney said, okay, no more <laughs> Disney comics. And they never did anything with it. Joe Books was publishing a Darkwing Duck comic, and that got canceled. Yeah. And now um, IDW owns the rights to DuckTales, Uncle Scrooge, and Donald Duck, the comic books. So we're finally at least getting that. That's back on the shelf. As I mentioned before, we live in the same state that Don Rosa comes from. Don mm -hmm. Rosa, this guy. This amazing, wonderful artist. And I saw him in Louisville, Kentucky, like, walking out of a restaurant. And I recognized the back of his head. This is a funny, <laughs> sto this is a funny story, right? And I ran up to him. I'm like, Don Rosa, oh my god, you drew Uncle Scrooge. 
and I love you, and I recognize the back of your head, which of course now sounds really awkward. Super, super, <laughs> really, no, no, no. super creepy. You told me when we went to Dragon Con, you were like, I have to go see Don Rosa. The back of his head looks like a little ducktail. No, the back of his head does like the. Yes, it does. So anyway. <laughs> So I saw him at Dragon Con, and I told him that's, like, he's like, you know what's funny? I, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and I've only been recognized out on the streets twice. And I was like, I know, I was one of those well, guys. Yes. <laughs> I recognized the back of your head, and he's like, oh, that was you. And then we talked for a while. and he, But that's yeah, really cool. like, mm -hmm. in any other country, like Italy, or, like, in most countries in Europe, like, the guy is treated as royalty. Like... There are lines waiting for him. Like he, like people pick him up in limos. He dines with the Duchess, and even at Dragon Con, it's mainly the European people that will wait in line for him. I didn't have to wait in line. And so and that's why I'm like, you know, I'm kind of dumbfounded by all this because if we said we watched this growing up and we're familiar with like, you know, the Uncle Scrooge with the Christmas Carol, like we're familiar with these shows, but I never knew there were comics until. Well, after I was done watching DuckTales. Right, like, and I wrote them off like the Archie comics and stuff. I was just like, and it's for kids. Yeah. So, but then you talk about this rich backstory because you're right. All this was, all this is, Uncle Scrooge is an adventurer and the crazy adventures that he gets into. Like, I would have loved to have known about this back then. And at least we have this now. So, what of this is in print now? Uh, luckily, and I highly suggest, is now that. Fanagraphics is doing a collection of the Don Rosa library. This is the first time that we're getting a complete library of all of Don Rosa's stuff. They're also doing the Carl Bark stuff, um, but I, I really like the box sets, and they're bringing the first box set back into print. It's been out of print in, for the last two years, and it was going for an insane yeah, amount of money. Yeah, I remember that. Now it's coming back into print, so if you don't have it, buy it. And is it under this Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck name? Yeah, it's under. If you Google or if you go on Amazon and shop for Don Rosa library okay. uncle scrooge you'll find it yeah these are the definitive like oversized books what i mean i love the story so much that i kept my original boom kids release of them the hardcovers with the actual gold made of not real gold nice. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like but his money bin because i mean they're just, and they're so rich and just awesome and there's so much like seriously like there's all these little footnotes that he writes in here that he's like, oh, this this panel comes from this story in walt disney stories number you know it, it's just the in, amount in just so much research, not just into the bar into the Barks comics, but like research about Aborigines, research about Australia and all these little islands and all these languages they speak. It's really rich. Ha! <laughs> Donald, have you considered getting a voice coach? Family friendly since we're talking about yeah. Disney ducks. Yes. All right. How I'll give they, you one, Dan. How can you not? Can you not not curse? Yeah, I did it before for the Disney episode. Let me get it all now. That's all. That's all good. No, I'm just <laughs>